Hey guys, welcome back to another Round Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to open the door with an animation of the handle going down, back up, and the door opening. So I did one a couple months ago, but it wasn't very good, so I'm going to be improving on that now. In that, I was using level sequences. This is timelines, so it's going to be a lot better. So let me show you what this is going to look like now. So we get in, go to the door, I press E, handle goes down, the door opens like that, I can go through. If I press E on this side, handle will go back down, and the door will close like so. You can change this to be faster, slower, different models, anything like that. But this is what we're creating today, fully customizable for you. So I'll delete the code and I'll show you how I've made this. So what our first step is going to be is we want to create our door blueprint. So what I'm going to do to that is we're going to right click, we're going to go to blueprint class, and we're going to create an actor. I'm just going to name this one handle door BP, but you can just name this door BP, anything like that. I'm just naming it this so I know which type of door this is. I'm going to open it up straight away like so. In here, you're going to want to make sure you're in the viewport, and we're going to add a component. So we go up to the top left up here, and add a component. We're going to add a static mesh. So add static mesh there, and I'm going to name this one door. Now what this wants to be is this just wants to be the door static mesh itself. So I'm going to be using the one from the starter content, which is just SM door there. So we have that like so. Now you see this has a handle on it already. However, I'm just going to be putting something over the top of that. So if you've modeled a door, and a handle, you can want to make sure that the actual door itself and the handle are two different static meshes. So what we're going to do now is add the handle static mesh. So with the door still selected, we're going to add component, add another static mesh, and then we're going to name this handle. And you can see it's kind of gone underneath the door here, and that's because this is then parented to it. So wherever the door goes, the handle goes as well, which is what we want. So I'm going to set this static mesh to just be a cube like so, and then I'll scale this down to be my handle. So let me do that now. Let me put it in position as, as well and scale it down to to get it where I want. Like I say, I'm just going to be covering the handle that's on here already. Let me just turn off snapping for the movement and scaling as well so I can get it even more precise like so. So this isn't going to be a great looking model as this is just literally a cube put on top of a door. So you can obviously do this a lot better if you'd like. I might just make it go out a little bit more so it covers that handle there like that. So it's quite a big handle, but you know, you get the idea. It's just something very simple just to show it off and show what it looks like, like so. So I now have my handle there like that. Now you can see that when I move the door, so if I was to rotate the door open, the handle goes with it. But if I rotate the handle, the door doesn't go with it. So that works perfectly like that because the handle is parented to the door. So now what we want to do is we want to set up some values. And these values are going to be our open and closed position for the door and our open and closed position or up and down angle for the handle. So let's do the door first. So you can see this is going to be our closed position. So when the door is closed, we want it like this. So the rotation on the Z is zero. Let's put that all the way at zero. So the rotation on the Z is zero. We want it on the Z because you can see the Z goes straight up like this. This is the axis we're rotating it on, like so. You can see up there, this is moving, like so. So the close angle is zero. So let's hit the plus variable here. I'm going to name this one closed angle like so. I'm going to change this from a boolean to be a float. Compile, and you can change its default value, but we're going to leave it as zero. I'm going to hit the plus variable again. I'm going to get open angle. Compile, we can change the default value. And for me, I want this to open this way to that. I want that to be the open position, which you can see is minus 100 on the Z. Put that back to zero. What I can do is in the open angle, change this value to be minus 100, like so. And now that's going to set up the open and closed angles. Now we want to do the same for the handle. So I'm going to hit the plus variable again. I'm going to call this up angle. You can call this open as well. But for the handle, obviously anything you want, I'm just calling it up. And the up, I'm just going to leave as that. And that's obviously you want to move it up. But I'm going to leave it just flat like that and then have it go down. So for me, that's again zero, except this time we're going to be rotating it on the X, not the Z. So X is also zero, like so. The up angle, I'll leave at zero. You compile default value of zero. Hit the plus variable again, call this down angle. And then if we move our handle to our position when it's, when it's down, I want it like that, so that's 20. So I'm going to put this as 20 on the X there. So down angle is going to be 20, like so. Let's compile and save that. And now we have all of our angles set up for the door to be able to open. Now what we need to do is just set up the code so we can actually play those animations and have the player open the door. 
So to do that, we can go up to the event graph here, like so. We can delete, begin overlap, and event tick. However, we do want to use the begin play. Out of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and get player controller, like so. And the return value of this, I'm going to simply just enable input. And that's not going on the target, that's going on the player controller. And this just simply means that the player can use the E key or the interact key to open their door. So I'm just going to select that, hit C to comment it, and just call this enable use of interact key, just so we know exactly what it does. And after this, actually there's one more thing we do need to add in the viewport. So let's just go down here to find some space where we're going to write this code, and then we'll add that. So we're going to go back to the viewport here, and we want to also add a box collision. And this is the collision in which the player has to be in to open the door. So we're going to have nothing selected in here. I'm going to add a component, get a box collision like so. I'm just going to name this interaction area or openable area. And like I said, this is essentially the player has to be in here in order for them to open the door. So what I'm going to do is just move it into the center of the door there, scale it up. So again, wherever you want the player to be, how close you want them to be, all that good stuff for opening the door, make sure that that box is the right size for you. So I think that's going to be good for me, like so. You can get this to be perfect for you and however you want, but that's good for me. Now let's go back to the event graph, right click on that interaction area or the box collision up in the top left there, add event, add on component begin overlap, right click on it again, add event, add on component end overlap. And this just essentially means the begin overlap is when the player enters the box and the end overlap is when they leave the box. So obviously when they begin, we want to be able to open the door. When they leave, we don't want to open the door. So let's just move those down a bit. To see if it's the player which is in there and it's overlapping it, we're going to come out of the other actor. I'm going to cast to our character. For me, that's the third person character, but for you, this could be third, first, what if you've named it? I'm going to do that for both of these. So the other actor on begin and end overlap. And again, this is just so that it's our character which is triggering this event here. Above this, we're going to get the E key or our interact key. So a good way to do that is setting up an action mapping. So I'm going to go to edit, project settings. And once this loads, we're going to scroll all the way down to input down here. I already have the interact here from previous tutorials, but what you're going to do is hit the plus action mapping there, name this to be interact or whatever you want to call it, and just change this from non to the E key or the left mouse button or the F key, whatever you want it to be. And that will work perfectly. The benefit of doing this is we can set up multiple keys, we can set it up for different consoles, and we can also set up key bindings. And we're going to close that and then back in this event graph here, we're going to right click and we're just going to get interact. You can see we have action events interact there. And this just works the same as any other key button. After this, what we want to do is we want to hold down G or left click to get a gate. The enter will go into the pressed of the interact. Open will be the cast off of begin overlap and close will be the cast off of end overlap. And so what this means is we can only come out of this gate if we are in the box collision and we press E. If we're not in the box collision and we press E, nothing will happen. If we're in the box collision and don't press E, nothing will happen. So this just means that we have to be close enough to the door and pressing E in order to open it. Then out of the exit, I'm going to come out of that, I'm going to get a flip-flop, which just toggles between two different values of A and B. For us, this is going to be open and close. Then out of A, what I'm going to do is just come out of that, I'm going to add a timeline like so. I'm going to name this open door or open door with handle, anything you want and make sure that goes into play like that. And we're going to double click this to open it up. In here, I'm going to add two float tracks. So let's do the first one first. So add float track there, and I'm going to name this one door track like so. The length up here is going to be how long you want it to take the door to open. So I want this to be two seconds, but you can set this to however long you want. This is just the total length that the animation will play for, so how long it will take for the door to open. And actually, I won't do the door track first, I'll do the door handle. So I'll call this handle track. You leave the length the same, the length is for the entire timeline. So what I'm going to do for the handle track is I'm going to right click on here, add a keyframe, set the time to zero and the value to zero as well. And what this is doing is it's going from the very start. We're going to add another keyframe with the time of 0.25 and a value of one. What this means is that 0.25 seconds into the timeline is going to be all the way down. So the handle will be all the way at the down position. Right click, add another keyframe of 0.5 and a value of zero, meaning it's going to go all the way back to the up position. So this here is the handles up, the handles down, handles up again. And I want this to take 0.5 seconds, but also you can have the time as whatever you like. Just make sure the value is zero, one, zero. So again, handle goes down and back up again. 
and that's all we need to do there. Then we're going to add another float track, like so, and this one is going to be the door track, like so. And in this, we're going to right click, add a keyframe again, but this we want to play after the handle. So the handle finished at 0.5 seconds, so the door is going to start at 0.5 seconds. The value, again, being zero. Then we're going to right click, add another keyframe, the time being at the very end of our timeline, so for me that's two, and the value being one. This is just going to go straight to the end of the timeline, like so. So now you can see here, this is our door timeline. So what's happening is the handle goes down and up, and then the door opens like so. That might not make too much sense if it's the first time you're using timelines, but essentially we're just taking these values up and down like so, and then we're going to be incorporating our other values in a minute to actually set the door's positions. So let's do that now. That's the timeline set up. So what we're going to do is we can close that minor tab there for the timeline, and then you see we now have these tracks here for our handle track and door track. So what we want to do after these is we want to actually move the door. So I'm going to get the handle first, so I'm going to get handle there, drag and drop a reference in, and I'm going to set relative rotation as we want to rotate it. And that is going to go into the update. So every single time the timeline updates, which is for every frame in the tracks, it's going to do this. And then how do we set the new rotation? So the new rotation is obviously how we're going to be rotating the door. We want to set that. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click down here and we're going to get a LURP, and just a normal LURP. So we have the float values and the alpha is going to go into the handle track there. What this does is it essentially is just going to use that track to go between the values of A and B. And the values of A and B are our up and down angles we made earlier. So let's put those in now. So we're going to have the up angle in A as that's where it starts the down angle in B as that is where we want it to end up and obviously go back to start there. Then if we right click on the new rotation and split structure pin as we only want to do this on the X, we're going to plug the return value into the X and this now means with this timeline we're going to be going between the up and down angle and back up to the up angle on the X for our handle here. And then we can do the same for the door. So we're going to get another LURP, so we can just duplicate that, plugging this into another set relative rotation where for our door this time. So if we duplicate that again we can just plug that off of the set relative rotation there and the door going into that target like so. And now this looks like it will do them at the same time, but obviously it won't because we're going to be using this door track instead, going to the alpha there, meaning that for the first 0.5 seconds, this one's not going to do anything because it doesn't have any values. The value is still zero. And as soon as it reaches the track, it's going to start updating and this one will stop because that track will have then ended. So again, this return value of this lap is going to go into the Z of the door this time as we're rotating it on the Z value. And again, A and B is our start and close values. So A is closed as that's where it starts, and then B is open as that's where it ends. And so now that is opening the door. So I'm just going to select that, hit C to comment it, and call this open door like so, or open door with timeline like that. And now we have that set up perfectly like so. So we can compile and save that, and that's going to open the door. But now how do we close it as well? Well, we just basically do this code again. So normally you could do a reverse, but since we have a handle, we want to do this slightly differently. So if we didn't have the handle animation, we could just go into reverse there and that would work. But what would happen now is if we did that, is it would then close the door and then play the handle. We don't want that. We want to do the handle and then the door. So what we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate all of this code here. So we just select all, control C, control V down here, like so. And I'm just going to change the comment here to be closed door with the timeline. So that shouldn't say timeline, that should say handle. I'm not sure why I wrote timeline. So handle there, I wrote handle here as well. And then this one is gonna go from the B also into the play. So again, we're not doing reverse because we're gonna change some values. So it's gonna go into play again. And I'll name this timeline closed door, like so. And all we want to do here is we just want to simply reverse what we have in the timeline. So again, we're not gonna be using the reverse track we're going to actually be doing it manually. So what we're going to do is we're just going to open this up and it's very simple. And all we want to do is we just want to switch these two values around for the door track. So instead of going zero to one, we're just going to make it go from one to zero. So we'll select this first one here, value of one, and select the final one, value of zero. And now this should work perfectly for us. So we're going to play the handle and then close the door. That's all we need to do in there because reversing the timeline will play the door closing and then the handle. We want the handle then door. Now if we compile, save that, and close that there, this should now be working for us. So we're going to open the door by pressing the E key if we're close enough to it. First time it will open the door with the handle, so it will do the handle, then the door. When we press it again it will do the handle and close the door. So let's minimize this 
place this in our world and test to see if this is working for us. So you can see we have our handle there like so. so. Let's hit play and test this to see if it works. So we walk up to it, we hit E, we've got the handle and the door opens like that. We walk up to it, press E again, we have the handle and the door closing like that as well. And if you want it to open the other way, you simply just either reverse the values or just flip it around like so. Now let's test this again with opening away from us this time, as I'd prefer that. So we walk up to it, press E, we have the handle and the door opening. We go through, we press E, handle, door close, perfectly like that. Now you might not even want the handle on the other one because sometimes you don't even have the handle. So what you do for that is if you don't want the handle animation reversing it and closing the door, you can simply just delete the handle track there and instead just move these values to the start. So select this value, set the time to be zero, and you can leave it like that. So now if we go back to the event graph, we deleted the track, so we just need to delete this lerp there and the handle like that. Go back into the update and this should work. So we've deleted the handle going up and down when closing it because sometimes you don't have that in real life. So now if we test this part again, we should see that changing. Use the handle, we can open it, we can walk through, and if we close it, it just closes straight away like that. So that works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video, which we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so we can open and close this door with the handle animation and then the door opens as well. So the handle goes down, up, and then the door opens. And we can have it on the way back as well, or not at all. Now you see this now happens afterwards. So an easy way to solve that is sometimes with timelines it gets a little bit glitchy. So all we need to do is just instead of going from play, we just play from start. Because what's happening is this isn't going back to the start. So we're playing it and it's at the very end as we're not actually reversing it. So if we were reversing it, we'd go from play. But since we're not reversing, we want to go from play from start instead. So if we just plug those in there like so, we should now see this working a lot better for us. So we can go up, press E, that goes in. We press E, we close it. If we press E again, it then opens again like so. So again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.